company member with Novelties Theater. And now I'm chatting with Miss Elaine Yes and Fossey Jack about Emily's Prayer from the Canterbury Tales. This piece is from Novelties' 2021 autumn show, The Canterbury Tales. In the night's tale, we hear the story of Emily, a young woman who wants to be a maid all her life and prays to Diana, goddess of the moon and hunt for two men, for the two men who are seeking her attentions to be distracted from her so that she can live her life. This piece is performed by Miss Elaine Yes and choreographed by Fossey Jack. Welcome Miss Elaine Yes and Fossey Jack. Thank you. Hi, thanks Ramona. So why this excerpt from this book? Well, I think uh, one of the choices that we made in wanting to feature this particular piece um, was uh, this piece, Emily's Prayer from the Night's Tale, is the only piece from that particular show that really focuses on one particular character, on Emily, um, and on Emily's journey and her relationship with herself. Um, and so it felt like a really good piece to share in this sort of format um, and to talk about uh, with, with you. So. Awesome. Uh, are there things about this book that resonate with you or that inspire you, Miss Elaine? I think that this particular passage of the tale uh, from the Canterbury Tales is interesting, particularly in this adaptation where Emily is given a little bit more agency over her story, um, where she is telling it herself as opposed to a separate knight, which is the twist in the script where she is telling her own story and transforms into the night at the end of her tale. That's so interesting. It, I mean, it really resonates well with, you know, even the little description about it. I'm not familiar with Canterbury Tales myself, but, uh, you know, it just, for her wanting to be able to run her own life, having her mm. narrate her own story. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I think that's really, that's very unique. Um, what were your first impressions of it as, uh, well, as you read the script with its new adaptation and the twist when you read it for the first time? I loved the, the ownership she had over her own journey. I loved that there are these two men that are wanting her attention and wanting her affection and she has no interest in that and she makes that clear but then her brother-in-law, who is in charge of the whole city, says, nope, you can have her. And she pushes back against that in, in going all the way to the top, going to a goddess as opposed to dealing with mortals. Yeah, uh, good for her. Yeah. Just, <laughs> um, I'd be pretty pissed if my brother-in-law just said, nope, and just, yeah, just, no, gross. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Fossey, when you were reading Canterbury Tales and working on adaptation and getting ready to choreograph it, what were your first impressions? I, first of all, I think when I, I first read, read the story, I was struck by a lot of the same same sort of feelings about this idea of, of agency and about being able to tell your own story. Um, as Chaucer wrote the story, as, uh, and the Knight's Tale specifically, um, Emily is just part of a legend, it's part of a, a folk story um, that the Knight is, is sharing. And um, in, in, a lot of, in a lot of ways, I think that is, I think so often in the stories that we tell in pop culture and in so much of the, the canon of classic literature, um, women don't get to tell their own stories. And it's still very new in, in a lot of ways. I mean, it's not universal in some places. We do have it. We do have examples in classic literature where women, women get to tell their own stories. And um, I think it's our job as a theater company to take those moments and to amplify them, but also to take those stories that don't have that particular element and change it so that they do. So to, to change the narrative um, in such a way that it gives that agency and that power. Um, the Knight was the only character in our, uh, in our adaptation that the, uh, the text adapter of Sailor St. Clair um, had made very specific uh, 
casting notes about, and the knight would be played by a femme-presenting individual. Um, that was very important. And um, I think that when I first had a chance to read uh, the script, to uh, sit with this particular story, um, with uh, the kind of weight and gravitas of what the knight and Emily being one and the same really lends to it, but also kind of how that changes the way we see the other characters in the, um, uh, in the story. It really changes things in a really fun and, uh, I think, impactful way. And then just taking this particular piece and um, leaning into all of the kind of steps of coming in and owning one's own self in this idea of um, supplication, in this idea of at first saying, you know, help me to, to get away from the situation or help me to change, um, and then contemplation and power through prayer and ritual, um, and then finally submission, but not in a way that is submitting to those outside forces. It's a submission to oneself. Um, and I think that's where Emily's power really comes in. And that's what we see at, at the end of this particular piece. That really sounds lovely. Um, are there any specific passages from this text that inspire you, inspire, inspire the piece that really make it, you know, that extra wow factor, at least personally to you? There is, at the beginning of the piece, there's a spoken word prayer, and I, I feel like that's probably the crux of the, I don't know, that's the crux of the piece, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, line-wise. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's very true. I also am thinking of, like, contextually, uh, another piece is this idea where we have the Duke, we have the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the uh, relative, um, who uh, is like, my will is this. And um, that sort of setting that example of that is what you have to face. That is what you, that is the obstacle you have to get through. And that's the obstacle that Diana then helps Emily um, overcome. And I think that is uh, a contextual piece that I find fascinating. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing it. I'd, it sounds, it really sounds like a really powerful moving piece. Um, well, thank you, Miss Elaine Yes and Fossey Jack uh, for your speaking with us today and sharing the piece we're about to see. Uh, now we'll turn to the stage where we'll get to see Miss Elaine's work uh, choreographed by Fossey Jack. Uh, Miss Elaine Yes is a multi-talented seductress who has been entrancing audiences since 2006 when she began performing as one half of the dynamic duo, the Yes Sisters. Over the years, she has embodied iconic heroines, lovable villains, bath-loving Muppets, ooh, sounds like fun, golden age Hollywood starlets, and a variety of pop culture favorites. She is also an associate member of the Novelties Theater Company. And now we turn to the stage where we'll see Miss Elaine Yes present these, this piece inspired by Emily's Prayer from the Canterbury Tales.
Thanks for watching Ekphrasis, a production of Novelties Theatre. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to make a tax-deductible donation through the link in the video description. And don't forget to like and subscribe below so you don't miss our next episode. <laughs>